Ever since moving to my home kitchen from an industrial one, I bought a hand mixer to help with filming videos. I was so used to using the stand mixer for everything that using a hand mixer was new and it surprised me in terms of how it performs with different tasks. Since I've been using both for a while now, I can share some insights on how the two compare in terms of tasks you're trying to complete. What are the advantages of each one and hopefully it can answer some questions like do I need a stand mixer or do I need a hand mixer if I already have the other one? A little about myself, I'm a classically trained French pastry chef and my style of pastry uses modern French technique and focuses on local and seasonal ingredients. Many of my pastry have Asian inspired flavor profiles and includes a wide variety of pastries from tarts to choux to entremets. In this video, I'm going to focus more on the type of mixer rather than the brand of the mixer. I live in Canada, so KitchenAid is a more obvious choice for stand mixer. I've used Kenwood and many other lesser known brands in the past, and although there's a definitive differences in the details, the general idea is the same. First, let's take a look at my current mixers. This is the Black & Decker hand mixer, and it comes with three attachments. The beater, the balloon whisk, and the dough hooks. It comes with a storage box to help keep things organized. This is my KitchenAid mixer. It's a 5 quart tilt head and it comes with 3 attachments which I find each useful for different purposes. The whisk, the paddle, and the dough hook. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each one. We'll start with the hand mixer. The obvious advantages compared to a stand mixer are how affordable it is, its lightweight and its small size. These attachments are dishwasher safe so cleanup is easy. It can whip a much smaller amount of cream compared to a stand mixer. It's also possible to whip cream over an ice bath or cake batter over a hot water bath, which is common in a lot of recipes in Asia. It is powerful enough to make thicker, wetter batter, but it's easy to over mix dryer dough. So I normally end up mixing dryer dough by hand. The beater cannot send the butter and flour together. So if you make a lot of French pastry, you'd have to use your hands. Other disadvantages will include not being powerful enough to make bread, despite the fact that they give you an attachment for it. Even if it did have enough power to make bread, I don't have the arm strength to hold it steady for 10 minutes of kneading. Now onto our stand mixer. Its obvious advantage is this motor being powerful and it can free up your hand. The three attachments work fairly well and two of them are dishwasher safe. I especially love the paddle attachment and it gives very good results with sublodge and it can incorporate dry and wet ingredients efficiently without over mixing. It makes thick batter and cookie dough a breeze. The biggest disadvantage compared to a handheld is how heavy and expensive it is. The whisk attachment needs at least a 100 milliliter in the bowl to be functional, making small batches nearly impossible. The tilt head model is not great at making bread as it moves around quite a lot during kneading, and you do need designated space for storage as it's hunky and harder to move around. But despite these disadvantages, KitchenAid really makes baking much easier when baking in bigger batches. Hence, it's an essential tool in the professional kitchen. Currently, I use both hand mixer and KitchenAid often and feel each can make up for the shortcomings of the other one. Hopefully, my experience using them help you decide which one you need in your kitchen or maybe both. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe for more videos. See you next time.